Hey, welcome to my next video. Let me show you what I have going on here. This is a completed project, but what I have on top here is an add a leaf suspension component. It's made by a company called Super Springs, and it's an add a leaf specifically designed for the Sprinter Van 3500 cutaway chassis. I think it's actually designed for the 3500 regular van chassis. It is similar to the cutaway chassis. I don't know how much difference there is, but I did get it to work. Let me give you a rundown of uh, what I did. I offset everything towards the rear because if you go any further forward, obviously it will hit the exhaust. If it goes any forward up to here, you'll hit this framing member. And right here is almost a cutoff where you'll hit the framing member here. So that is the reason why I have it offset towards the rear. The instructions say you can offset it towards the rear. And that's what I have going on. That's why the setting block even here is offset towards the rear. Yeah, this video is not really gonna be a DIY video. I did have a pretty tough time install on this. If I had to rank this uh, install, it would probably fit in the 9.5 category on the most difficult to install. I have seen other uh, Sprinter bands, the regular van installs. They look a little bit uh, easier. The leaf packs are a lot uh, smaller. They're not as uh, bowed as this one. So again, the ins in installation instructions say use some C-clamps and you can just get this down. Not true in my case. And if you can get it done on this cutaway chassis that way, more power to you. I will show you what I ended up using. I'll, I'll give you a, a parts uh, list later on. But the reason I ended up putting this leaf spring in is I compare it to, if you've ever had a pickup truck or, well, I guess any kind of car, and you know when you load it up to the maximum and you take that down the road and you know how it feels like it's floating? And you may not be overweight, but anytime you load up a vehicle, we'll call it to the maximum weight rating of the suspension, they all seem to have that floaty ride. And that's what I compare this uh, um, cutaway chassis to. Once the RV manufacturer puts that box on top, you know, you're maxing out the suspension and they just don't ride as nicely. So th that's why this uh, Adelief leaf is on here. It's nothing new. You know, this Adelief leaf has been around for a long time. Uh, a couple of different manufacturers make this. I just picked this brand because it's the fastest I could get. Now, in my testing, I have a few thousand miles on this, and I can tell you with the add, add addition of this and the uh, new sway bars, I've done them at separate times, but I can pretty much fly through those uh, driveway approaches and not have any issues. The one thing I, uh, I did change is that my na uh, next set of uh, testing is I removed the sumo springs. Normally the sumo springs would be here, and you're going to see that uh, later on in this video. It's a rust color. Originally it was yellow, but it's a rust color. And here's the Fox shocks. And there's been reports in the past that the sumo springs and the Fox shocks, they don't play nicely with each other. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, give it a try without the sumo springs and put, put a few thousand miles uh, on this. And then I do have some other mods that are uh, coming up. So stick around, I'll show you how I did this. And again, not a DIY, but I, uh, based on putting on a few thousand miles on this, this really helps you uh, hand, handle the weight better. And uh, I would suggest this mod. Like I said, the difficulty on, on my end is about a 9.5 out of 10 on the difficulty. So you might be better off just bringing it to a suspension shop that has better tools set up to install this. It'd be really quick if you had the proper tools. Without the proper tools, this is going to be a pain in the butt. And it can be, of course, uh, dangerous at the same time. So stick around, I'll show you how I did it. Let me give you uh, what I have set up so far. This is what I have set up. Over here, you will see the U-bolt with the plate and it's set up ready to tighten. I did put this vice grip here and it's snug against the u-bolt so as i tighten the u-bolt the u-bolt is uh, basically stuck in between this bracket and the vice grip so the u-bolt won't slide on me it's, it's metal so it's kind of slippery and i did the same thing over on this side here as so i will go back and forth with the u-bolts and cinch both sides down at the same time 
Now as I cinch down, there's going to be a lot of resistance for that spring to go back up. Now the spring really can't go anywhere, but it just makes me feel better. I do have these two C-clamps. I may be tightening them along the way to ease the how it goes. Pick up one of these box wrenches or open wrench and that will make it a lot easier. On the other side, I actually had this plain old three quarter inch box wrench and it took me forever to do it. So this should speed things up. Here I'm going to show you some of the tools I used for this project. Let's start out with uh, these two large C-clamps and I'll explain to you why I have these two large C-clamps as well as these two uh, vice grips. I put some white tape on here um, so they don't slide on the leaf spring that much. And then a three quarter inch box wrench. And this one is very handy. It's a ratcheting three quarter inch box wrench. Very handy to have. Uh, Nine sixteenths ratchet and box wrench. And then the, I have the air gun, it's just a cheap air gun. It just makes speed things up. And this is the only part that comes with the uh, super springs. It's a little uh, U-bolt. And uh, let me explain to you a little bit about, it's almost impossible to install it with just this U-bolt and these C-clamps on this 3500 chassis. So what I did was I also purchased these two giant U-bolts here and made my own little bracket. It didn't come with the, uh, it's basically equal to this piece here. Made my own here. And if you watch part of the video, I use this to cinch down the super spring. There's no way you can uh, cinch down that super spring with the C-clamps like it says in the instructions. What super springs should do is furnish you four of these U-bolts, two of this length, and two a little bit longer. These are longer than necessary, but I would say you probably need good seven inch U-bolts, uh, half inch diameter, just like this. Basically a duplicate of this, except seven to eight inches. And that should give you enough tools to finish the job if you want to do it yourself. Otherwise, bring it into a suspension shop. Let me show you the finished project before I put on the wheels. Here I have the uh, super spring installed. I only have it on the second hole because it's impossible to put it on this hole. On this chassis, there is this uh, rubber spacer here, which makes it impossible to squeeze that leaf spring um, anymore to get to this hole. So the second hole is the only hole you can uh, utilize. That's basically the further you go up in the hole, the firmer the setting is. Same thing for the back. And I did offset everything closer to the back because of this exhaust. On mine, the exhaust is in the way here. And if you slide it any more forward, it actually bottoms out on this framing member. And this is your finished super springs. I will uh, take it for a test drive and see how it feels. But you can, if you look way in the back, you'll see the setup on the other side. It's identical except that side does not have an exhaust. What I might do now, this is a uh, vehicle is raised up as high as it could be. So technically, when you set the vehicle back down, there's gonna be a big gap between the uh, exhaust and these. What I might do is I, end, I might end up just cutting with a wheel, cut the bottom of those because they're not necessary. I don't want them, uh, I'm pretty positive I wouldn't want them any less firm. It needs to be the most firm setting because this little uh, leaf spring is gonna be way overworked on this chassis. 